Overnight, uh, Defense Secretary James Mattis signing orders to pull all remaining troops out of Syria. This just hours after the president confirms Mattis will leave the White House January 1st, not at the end of February like he wanted to. Our next guest argues there is nothing for America in Syria and agrees with the withdrawal argument. We haven't defeated ISIS by taking its territory. Fox News contributor Andy McCarthy has prosecuted some of the country's most high-profile terrorists, including the blind sheikh. That was the beginning, many people thought, of understanding the terror threat right here at home. Uh, Andy, you have no problem with the pullout. Well, I didn't think we should go in in the first place, Brian. I've been for six years arguing that we shouldn't have intervened in Syria, which is a conflict that pits one collection of America's enemies, that is, Iran, Russia, backing Assad's regime, against three other sets of Americans, America's enemies, Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood groups, which we like to talk about as our moderate allies, and ISIS, which is just a breakaway faction of al-Qaeda. If we stay out, they're all fighting each other. Uh, we go in, and we've gone in without having authorization to do half of the mission that we're in there for. And I'm just I'm baffled that a lot of my friends seem to think that the right. Constitution is just a suggestion, that we can go into a country, occupy territory, conduct combat operations against that country, being Syria uh, and its allies there, and we don't have to have any right. congressional authorization. We can just well, do that I on think, I think somebody you make a, say so. Yeah, I think you make a great point over everything that's happened since Vietnam about congressional authorization and military actions. I get it. But on the actual move there, we're not there to settle down Syria. We're not even there to protect the refugees. We're there to go after ISIS, as you mentioned, a outgrowth of al-Qaeda, who are directly a threat at here, who you know, who the mindset, uh, who the mindset is the same one that influences things like the Pulse bombing and the San Bernardino attack. When ISIS is looked at as losing and we were putting heavy damage on him in a way in which President Obama could only dream of, President Trump was doing huge damage, then the terror threat diminishes at home. We're not looking to settle a Syrian war. We almost lost the entire country of Iraq. They were outside Baghdad until we armed the Kurds and started providing intelligence and information for them. Brian, that, that's the story that's put out about what happened there. In point of fact, uh, you have a region that is teeming with Islamic supremacism, basically the theory that you have to impose Sharia on everything. Uh, ISIS took a lot of territory, but the fact that we've taken the territory back from them does not mean that we have vanquished ISIS. They have thousands, we agree on tens that. of thousands we agree of fighters that. that are still underground. And while we were concentrating on ISIS, al-Qaeda is ascendant. So the only thing that's happened there is that the pieces have moved around. It's not like we've defeated but, anybody. But, Andy, nobody could appreciate the need for great intelligence more than you because it helped put your cases together and unwind plots before they happen. And what we were able to get with those yeah, 2,000 troops... Look, look, but, but let me just finish. What we were able to get with those 2,000 troops goes right to the FBI and NYPD and all these cities around the country, and they will show you what we've done. What President Trump has done is great, but what he's going to do early is a classic America pull off your... Pull the foot off the throats early, and it's going to make everyone's, uh, everyone's security more perilous. Brian, what do you think would happen if they, went, if they went to Congress and asked for congressional authorization for the mission in Syria? Uh, I missed the... They were talking in my ear. I missed that. Uh, I, I, my, uh, what, do you, what do you think would happen if they... If, I'm fine with us being there if we go to Congress and get authorization for it. Yeah. But I'm asking, what do you think would happen if they went to Congress I, and, and looked for authorization? I, I think it would yeah. get voted down. The oh. reason Obama didn't go for it and the reason Trump didn't go for it before he did the things he said Obama needed authorization for is mm -hmm. that the public has never wanted right. this mission. Andy, and as it's, far a, as it's a tough thing because concerned, it's, these are terror groups, not countries. And I would say what we're doing in North Africa and what we're doing there is doing so much to keep us safe here. Uh, and that's what I think is not going to play. Then go to Congress and get right. authorization for it. Congress can't even agree on a wall or a fence or a drone. But thank you, Andy. I appreciate so, so do you, it. Well, do you think do you think that's a suggestion well, in the Constitution that you don't need to do that now well, because you're frustrated? There's two different with the issues. Finish Congress the job works? or get authorization. Thanks, Andy. Back in a moment.